shit you live in. Yo, what's wrong, KC? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the effect you have just seen on the screen. Now, before we get into today's video, just like you might do, guys, do please do hit that like and that subscribe button if you end up enjoying the video, as well as leave a comment down below in order to help me, uh, you know, get more views, get more money, you know the drill. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Let me just go ahead and adjust my chair here because I needed to do that. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd use face cam for this video because why not? Uh, and yeah, that is pretty much it. So I have got the music just lined up with all the beats that I need for myself. This is the initial kill right here. And this is just the intro. So I'm going to show you first off how to do the ident thing. Then I'm going to show you how to do, you know, everything else essentially. I'm not entirely sure what was in there. Probably the beat shake then the build up and then finally the impact. Uh, so yeah, let's get started on that. Let's first go ahead and drag in the uh, the clip that we are using here. It is going to be this one right here. So what you're now gonna wanna do is, I'm just gonna go, go ahead and remove the audio track just for my convenience, you don't need to do that. And you're gonna wanna find where you want your build up to start in the music, where you want the echo to start. So let's go ahead and listen back to the music here. Alright, so I've already decided that my uh, my buildup should start here, or that the echo should start here. So what we're going to do is just drag this a bit forward and just sort of drag it like that. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, move this here to what is sort of where we want the buildup to start. Now this, uh, this frame should have a clear view of the character and the pump should be pulling out right here. So once you've got that, just go and drag the rest back and just sort of fade this in until, you know, like maybe maybe a minute 30, something like that. It is uh, very, very late, so please excuse me if I slur or like rant or something. Um, but yeah, uh, just go and fade it in like that. I'm going to go ahead and make it a uh, slow fade like that. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is drag in our, uh, our ident. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that. That'll be like right there for me. So just drag it in there. And we should just sort of have this uh, this area right here. And I've already gone ahead and marked out the areas in between, but it should be something like this for you. So just go ahead and add a marker at the end and the marker at the start. Now, obviously a project media alpha channel straight on matted. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the uh, the background overlay of my choice. Now, I unfortunately cannot release this no matter how much I want to because it is from a paid uh, overlay pack. So I literally can't uh, release it to you guys, which really sucks because I 100% would if I could, uh, but I can't. So that sort of sucks. Uh, but I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and add that right there. I'm gonna go and drag that beneath. I'm gonna set this to screen. And now we have like something like that, you know? And uh, what we're going to do next is just add another video track and we're going to add the uh, the black bars. All right, the black bars are right here. So obviously these are transparent as well. So we just put those straight on Madden. Uh, and what we're going to go ahead and do is just set those at the end right there. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, do something like that right there. And then we just drag that out to fit that this overlay will be in the description of course uh just so you guys know and uh yeah we have the uh we have everything set up here so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is just animate the black bars going in now this is actually very very easy to do which you're gonna go ahead and go into video effects tab search for blur mode curves right there uh and just add something literally anything and then just go like a bit in add a keyframe on z distance and add a marker now go ahead and go down here and zoom in until you can no longer see the uh, the black bars right there. Go ahead and right click, set this to split manual. Go ahead and open curves, drag this up. And you're going to go ahead and make this as smooth as possible. So it'll be something like that. Roughly, you want it to be smooth like that. So uh, now once you've gone that, just go ahead and go back into lanes. Just drag this down. And you're just going to want to go ahead and fade these in a bit, uh, preferably the 3D as well, honestly, because it does look a bit weird here. Obviously, you wanted to see it I'm, I didn't as me, uh, so this will be a bit different. Uh, but yeah, now what you're going to go ahead and do is head up here, go to S Tint, just drag in this, copy these values right here, uh, this code, and uh, one right there. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe this. So we just drag that there. This should be right there. Then we go like here and set that to white. Go ahead and delete that. Uh, and now let's go like here, add a keyframe. Go here, set this to white. Maybe drag that a bit back, drag that a bit back as well. And now you can actually see the background a lot more clearer, which is always great. Uh, now the last thing we're going to do is animate the actual overlay right here. So we just go to blur mode curves, just apply something here, go to Z distance, add a keyframe towards the end. Now go to the, uh, the frame before the end and just zoom in like, like that. And then we just set that to slow. And what this is going to do is it's going to animate like an outward transition right here. So we want to do this a bit before the ident disappears. And realistically, we don't really want the ident to be somewhere. Like the ident ends right here. So uh, what we're going to do is realistically just drag that out a bit so that it, it, it ends together right there. And now we have that. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is get the, uh, the, the song set up. So just go ahead and copy these down right there. Just go ahead and do that and drag that down to its own layer. Then go ahead and just fade these out like that. Go ahead and do that on both sides. Drag this in like that and out like that. So make sure this is set to a slow fade and this is set to, or this is set to slow fade. This is set to a, a slow fade as well. And then this should be sort of a, a slow fade or whatever that is. And this should be a, uh, I don't really know what you call these, honestly. Like the, the names are weird, but it should look like that. Uh, and yeah if you listen back to it there shouldn't really be any raise in volume or anything like that so if you're unsure just go ahead and look back on that uh now once you've got that sorted just go ahead and go into the more section right here of the new uh audio track go to track effects go up here into the uh the f with the plus click on ambience up here this is an external plugin uh i have tutorial on how to download it it'll be in the description uh so if you don't have that just go ahead and check that out yeah, just click on ambience, add OK. And now what you're going to go ahead and do is just click on open there. And this Dignal God Echo FX will be in the description. I finally made my own echo thing. Uh, I just decided to fucking learn ambience because I can't keep telling you guys to buy the AP pack. It's just free promotion and it's stupid. So uh, this is in the description. Uh, and that's great. Uh, now, once you've added that, just go ahead and click on the add button again, go to resonant filter, click add OK, and set the frequency hertz to 1200 like that. And now what we have, if we listen back to it, maybe we can pre-render it hopefully without it taking too long. Uh, this looks like it's going to take a while because I'm, why is it on draft full? Like it's on full up here. That's not good. Let's go like a draft, probably quarter because we're, we're recording here. We can't have this take too long. Um, but yeah, what we what we have right now should look something like this. There you go. Now it does sound a bit loud, so we can just go ahead and decrease the gain here to like negative three point something. Uh, it's up to you really, but I do like to decrease the gain there a bit if it sounds sort of a bit too loud. Uh, now what we can go ahead and do is actually get started on the beat shake right here. All right, so what you're going to want to go ahead and do is just head down into the description and download or go to the drive link there and download the preset. Now, uh, just go ahead and split the track sort of like here where the ident room or it just isn't there anymore. So I split it right there and then just go ahead and add the, uh, the preset that is in the description. Uh, so let me just go ahead and find it here. Should be right here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and like split it here because, you know, we'll have to do that anyway. And as you can see, we do have a sort of um, black and white, you know, uh, beat shake there, which is great. And it really does help with the uh, just the, the merging of everything. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying right now. Um, but anyway, let's just move on to the actual uh, build up. So what you're going to want to go ahead and do right here is go to the marker uh, that you have right here where you want the build up to start and mask out the character from here until the kill. Now, uh, it won't be that much. It'll only be like a couple frames, hopefully. Uh, I've already done this, so let me go ahead and find it on my second monitor. But this is something that you need to do. You can do it in Vegas. I have a Rotobrush tutorial in my pack. I might release one on my channel, but most likely not because it's not really that great of a tutorial. 
Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Now I'm just going to go ahead and import this roto brush right here. And what we, what I'm going to do is actually just line this up. So if you have your own roto brush, you should be doing something similar to this. So you just line it up until everything looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and split it right there. And now we have this section with the roto brush or the mask on top. Now, if you've masked it out, there should just be a layer with the mask, but it'll be the exact same thing. Essentially, you're just going to go ahead and render it out with quick, quick time. So if you have a mask right here, that's just masked out. What you're going to go ahead and do is select it. Click on the S right here. Go to file render as, and then go to quick time seven. Uh, let me just go ahead and wait for it to load up here. Go to QuickTime 7. You will need QuickTime to solve for this, but I'm hoping that you already do. Then just go ahead and copy all of these settings right here. Just go and pause the video, copy those, and then render it out. And that is going to render it with a transparent background. And that's going to get you exactly what I have here. So now what we're going to go ahead and do for this is actually just apply our Twixter to the bottom track. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this right here. You can copy these settings if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tint because we really don't need it. And I'm just going to go ahead and keyframe that. So like one, two, let's set that to 30. Let's go to sort of where we want the impact to be. Now, it'll be way longer than what we have down here. So just ignore the music for now. So let's see how long we want it. Let's say we want it to be like right, right there, maybe. And then we just add it right there and then we actually no we want it to be before the actual shot i guess so it should be like there we can have it start so let's add our first key from there and then we go one two three four five six then we drag it up now the reason we want to have it there is so that uh what's it called it doesn't get weird when the character shoots and it's still in slow-mo because that does not look amazing and then we set that to 50 and then we just cut the clip off where we wanted to cut off, essentially. And once you've done that, just go ahead and render this out separately. So uh, essentially, just go ahead and render that out. Just go ahead and isolate it right there. We don't want the mask with that. Click render as and then just go ahead and select your normal render settings and render the Twixter out. And I'll see you guys once that is done. All right, the thing has now finished rendering and I've got it right here. But now what we need to do is actually copy these attributes uh, of the Twixter layer by pressing Control C and then pasting it on top of our mask. And it'll look like that. Now we just drag it out until the impact happens right here. That'll be right there for me. So we just drag it out until there. Uh, and just make sure that it doesn't uh, sort of repeat itself like there. So we want to stop it right there. And the mask stops right there, which is great. And now when, now after you've done that, just go ahead and replace the bottom one with the untwisted layer. And the mask should perfectly cover it up. Uh, now just press the S bar on the, uh, the place with the mask right there. We can just drag that one up. Actually, it doesn't matter that much. And just click render as right there. I'm actually going to go ahead and fix this. Uh, and we're just going to essentially render this mask out as a transparent top thing. Now, this is so we can add another preset to this. Uh, and it's pretty much easy. So just go into QuickTime, copy the, uh, the the settings we used last. And let's call this Roto1. And just go ahead and render this out. Now, this is going to be significantly faster than the Twix layer, I hope. Uh, because it is just a mask and it'll look sort of like that. Uh, but yeah, it is a very, very easy and uh, sort of required method for Vegas. Obviously, I would recommend or I would prefer it if we had um, if we had adjustment layers, but we don't, which fucking sucks. So we have to do this. But yeah, it's going to take a bit longer than I expected. So I'll see you guys when the render is done. All right. Now, once you have this roto brush layer right here all synced up, what you're going to go ahead and do is head into our video effects tab and search for edge detect. Go ahead and drag default in, and then just go ahead and play around with the threshold and brightness a bit until you get something that looks good, I guess. You want the edges to be like perfectly lined up. And yeah, you just want that to be uh, cool. So like that, I guess. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is just add a hue set bright to this default. Just adjust this until it is perfectly red, just like that. 
maybe even adjust the threshold a bit as to not have any of those unnecessary details in the center. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is render this out once again. So just press S, go ahead and press Control S, just save it before we render. Always do that, kids. Uh, QuickTime 7 tutorial uh, Roto 2 dot mlv just like that and it'll render out now this will only take a couple seconds hopefully and it should look something like that um and this is going to help us with the tinting later on in the actual mask effect so just go ahead and delete track right there just go ahead and uh, delete the bottom one drag this in set this to media alpha channel straight on matted uh, go ahead and undo that, set the compositing mode to screen, and now we should have something like that. Go ahead and fade it in by like 10 frames, I guess. And now you can go ahead and go into the description and download the preset that is down there. Then just go ahead and paste this on to the, uh, the roto brush, and we should be good to go after that. And it'll look sort of like that, and this is very cool. So now what you're going to go ahead and do is actually copy the uh, the second effect that is down there. And it's called like the VHS background or whatever. Uh, just go ahead and split the kill or split the clip on the kill right there. Go ahead and paste the event attributes below there. Now this is just going to make it look like that. And there we go, boys. We have our, uh, our skin glow effect. Very, very cool. Now, lastly, I'm just going to go ahead and cover the actual uh, impact right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my usual main impact. But what we're going to go is go into our video effects tab and search for warp waves. And we're going to want to add both of these. So just go into impact, just copy these settings, go ahead and keyframe it, go like into the middle, set that to zero and set that to fast right there. I'm now going to go ahead and check out my second monitor right here. This might come up here. Yep. And you're going to want to go ahead and copy these settings right here. So I'm just going to scroll down right there. Just go ahead and copy all of those settings. Keyframe the A amplitude and B amplitude. I'll set it to those values. And then just go, uh, how many frames in is it? Go to the end and set the, the first keyframe to fast. And this is just going to create sort of uh, this effect that I'm going to show you right here. So it's just going to warp it a bit and it's going to make it look a bit more eventful than if it had nothing at all. All right, now what we're going to go ahead and do is get started on the sound effects of this. What we're going to go ahead and do is just split the song like right there. Go ahead and drag this part to the side. We don't really need to work with that right now. Then just go ahead and split the song like a bit back. I'd say you can really eyeball it like 30 frames maybe. Drag it down and then go ahead and just delete the top part and drag it back. Now we should have something like this and we can just sort of fade that out and drag that forward, fade it in roughly like that. And then just go and drag it out a bit more and fade it down. And remember that one, both of these should be set to slow fade. So the one that's going out should be set to the top option and the one going in should be set to the middle option. And once we've got that, we just get sort of this. And now what we're going to go and do is just go to our impact and just sync up the song with it. So for that, for us, it'll be like that. And we can just go and fade it in a bit. Fuck it. Uh, we can also go ahead and remove the gain a bit there uh, to make it sound a bit better. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is just go into our drive folder in the description again. And just go ahead and download the, uh, the two build up impacts that are down there. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and paste them from my project file, but they should look sort of like that. Now, the way you're going to want to line this up is just make them both to zero, zero right there. Make the top one negative 14.4 in gain and make the pump pancake negative one negative 1.3. There we go. Then just go and sync them up roughly like that. And we now have the entire clip ready to go right here. So, uh, yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like down below, comment, subscribe, all the good shit, and I'll see you guys in a couple days, and peace.